Alexander Yurievich Pachushkin, also known as the Chessboard Killer and the Bitsa Park Maniac, was born on April 9, 1974, in Maitishchi, Moscow Oblast, Soviet Union. He spent his childhood at 2 Kersonskaya Street in Moscow, living with his mother, Natalia Elmoradovna, his younger half-sister, her husband, and their son in a two-bedroom apartment on the fifth floor. This residence was a short walk from the north end of Bitsa Park. In his early years, Pichushkin was sociable, but a traumatic incident altered his behavior significantly. He fell from a swing, which struck him in the forehead upon his fall. Experts believed this event damaged his frontal cortex, leading to poor impulse control and heightened aggression. As a child, his vulnerability exacerbated the impact of this injury. Following the accident, Pachushkin displayed frequent hostility and impulsiveness. Due to his behavioral issues, Pachushkin's mother decided to transfer him from a mainstream school to one designed for children with learning disabilities. Prior to this transition, students from the mainstream school subjected Pachushkin to physical and verbal bullying, labeling him as that retard. This mistreatment further fueled his anger. In early adolescence, Pachushkin's maternal grandfather recognized his high intelligence and felt that his potential was being squandered. The school focused more on addressing disabilities than nurturing talent. Pachushkin moved in with his grandfather and was encouraged to pursue intellectual interests outside of school, with chess being his most profound passion. He learned to play and impressed others with his chess skills, often engaging in exhibition matches against elderly men in Bitsa Park. Chess provided an outlet for his aggression, but he continued to face bullying from mainstream school peers. His emotional state worsened after his grandfather's death in his late adolescence, prompting him to return to his mother's home and enroll as a student. The loss of his grandfather had a profound impact on Pachushkin, leading him to cope with his grief and aggressive tendencies through heavy alcohol consumption. He continued to play chess both at home and in Bitsa Park, where he joined other men in drinking vodka. Unlike them, alcohol did not significantly impair his chess abilities. During this period, Pachushkin secretly developed a sinister hobby unknown to others. When he anticipated encounters with children, he carried a video camera and threatened them on film. In one disturbing incident made public, he held a young child upside down by one leg, announcing, You are in my power now. I am going to drop you from the window, and you will fall 15 meters to your death. He would later watch these videos repeatedly to reaffirm his sense of control. However, by 1992, these disturbing practices no longer satisfied his growing urges. Homicides, Russian media have suggested that Pachushkin may have been influenced, at least in part, by a gruesome rivalry with another infamous Russian serial killer, Andrei Chikatilo, who was convicted of the murders of 52 children and young women over a span of 12 years. Pachushkin initially claimed that his goal was to take the lives of 64 people, corresponding to the number of squares on a chessboard. However, he later retracted this statement, stating that he would have continued his killing spree indefinitely if he had not been apprehended. Pachushkin's murderous journey began on July 27, 1992, when he was just 18 years old. He had arranged to meet up with his classmate, Mikhail Odichuk, at Bitsa Park to discuss a plan to carry out their macabre goal of taking 64 lives. When they reached their meeting point, Odichuk had a change of heart and expressed his reluctance to proceed with their sinister plan. Pichushkin, feeling provoked by his closest friend's hesitance, strangled him and disposed of his lifeless body in a sewer entrance at Bitsa Park. He then returned to his mother's apartment, which was located nearby, and the victim's remains were never recovered. Following Odichuk's mysterious disappearance, the Moscow police initiated an investigation. Witnesses reported that Odichuk was last seen in the company of Pachushkin, heading towards the park. Consequently, Pachushkin was apprehended at his mother's residence on July 30th and brought in for questioning at the Moscow police station. When questioned about his activities on the day of Odichuk's vanishing, Pachushkin acknowledged meeting with him, but asserted that he had left his friend unharmed in the park. With insufficient evidence linking him to the disappearance, Pichushkin was eventually released. Pichushkin refrained from committing further murders for several years, until 1996, when Russia imposed a moratorium on the death penalty.
This development reignited Pachushkin's deadly intentions. On May 17, 2001, Pachushkin found himself in Bitsa Park engaged in a game of chess with a 52-year-old man named Yevgeny Pronin. After the conclusion of their match, Pachushkin extended an invitation to Pronin to join him for a walk, citing the anniversary of his dog's passing as the reason and expressing a desire to visit the canine's resting place within Bitsa Park. Pronin agreed and followed him to a secluded section of the park. Once they arrived, Pachushkin produced a bottle of vodka and offered Pronin a drink. As a gesture of remembrance, they raised their glasses in a toast to the dog. However, in a sudden and violent turn, Pachushkin struck Pronin forcefully on the head with the vodka bottle, resulting in his immediate demise. Subsequently, Pachushkin disposed of Pronin's lifeless body by tossing it into a nearby well. Between May 2001 and September 2005, Pachushkin embarked on a spree of attacks, targeting a total of 36 victims. Among these, three individuals managed to survive their encounters with him. Typically, Pachushkin would approach his victims in Bitsa Park, many of whom were elderly and homeless. He would extend an offer to share a drink of vodka only to then perpetrate their murders, often by delivering fatal blows to the back of their skulls using either a hammer or a bottle. He was also rumored to have pushed some victims into a sewage canal to drown. On occasion, he would leave a gruesome signature by inserting sticks or an empty vodka bottle into the victim's skulls. From October 2005 until his final murder in 2006, Pichushkin altered his modus operandi. He continued to end the lives of his victims through repeated strikes to the head with a hammer. However, he introduced a macabre twist by thrusting a vodka bottle into the gaping wounds in their skulls. Pachushkin always executed his attacks from behind to catch his victims off guard and minimize the risk of blood staining his clothing. Notably, ten of his victims resided in the same cluster of four buildings where he lived. Four in two Kersenskaya, two in four Kersenskaya, three in six Kersenskaya, and one in eight Kersenskaya. In June of 2006, Pachushkin proposed going on a walk with Marina Moskalyova, his 36-year-old colleague. Despite her initial suspicion, Moskalyova reluctantly agreed to accompany him. Before leaving, she left a note for her son, informing him of her whereabouts with Pachushkin, and provided his phone number. Pachushkin was aware of the note but remained undeterred. Tragically, Moskalyova's lifeless body was discovered in Bitsa Park on June 14, 2006, bearing the distinctive injuries associated with Pachushkin's modus operandi. Authorities found a Moscow metro ticket in her possession, prompting them to review surveillance footage from the metro system. The footage revealed that just hours before her demise, Moskalyova had been seen walking on a platform alongside Pachushkin. Upon his capture, Pachushkin cooperated with the police and guided them to various crime scenes within Bitsa Park. He demonstrated a remarkable recall of how each murder had been committed. This process was a routine part of Russian criminal investigations. Additionally, Pachushkin disclosed that some of his victims met their fate through means other than his preferred method of delivering fatal hammer blows to the back of the head. Instead, he had thrown some victims into the sewer lines beneath Bitsa Park though one had miraculously survived this ordeal. Pachushkin claimed that the power to decide whether his victims lived or died gave him a godlike sensation. He once articulated, In every instance, I took a life for a single reason, to preserve my own. When you take a life, you're driven by the desire to live. To me, a life devoid of murder is like your existence without sustenance. I felt like the guardian of these people, for I was the one who opened the door to another world for them. On October 24, 2007, Pachushkin was found guilty of committing 49 murders and three attempted murders. He later requested that a Russian court add 11 more victims to his gruesome tally, claiming a total of 60 lives taken and three survivors. During his trial, Pachushkin was confined within a transparent enclosure for his own safety. After his conviction, Judge Vladimir Usov sentenced Pachushkin to life imprisonment, specifying that the initial 15 years must be served in isolation. Pachushkin appealed his sentence, arguing that it was excessively severe, and sought a reduction to 25 years. As of 2017, 
He was enduring his days in solitary confinement at the Arctic penal colony known as the Polar Owl.